Order. First on our agenda is Pledge of Allegiance, land, uh, led by Ms. Sandra Gilliard. I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I'd like to call Mr. Mark Chumney up for the invocation. Hey. Pastor Mark Chumney, sorry. Okay. That's all right. Let's go ahead and bow our heads and pray. Father God, we are so thankful, Lord, for the servants who are sitting before us who serve this school, who serve this community. God, I pray that this afternoon that there would be peace and there would be wisdom in the middle of this uh, meeting. God, that all the decisions that have to be made, Lord, would be made in a timely manner. And God, that your favor would be present in this room. We pray all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Bless. We are honored to have with us today for our presentation Miss Jimmy Simons, one of our own from Putnam County Schools. If you'd like to come up, Jimmy. Thank you so much for having me today. I want to thank also, first of all, Miss Laura France. I don't know if she's in the room for inviting me, uh, for her enthusiasm and invitation. Um, and I want to th thank Mr. Rick Surrency, our superintendent, for his support of pickleball in the schools and at our clinic. He and Ms. France actually came to our teacher clinic that we held last week. And I understand he's been on the radio also. I missed it this morning, but my granddaughter did win the prize that he sparked through what do you know about pickleball? We called in as we were turning into James A. Long, and she won the prize. So thank you, Mr. Surrency. You're um, pickleball, as known uh, by CBS News, NBC Sports, and Sports Network, WCVB TV, as America's fastest growing sport, and I truly believe it is. It is just booming. We are not one of the earliest states or cities to uh, embrace pickleball. It is a really fast, just exploding sport. Don't judge it by its name. It's very competitive, very <laughs> exciting for any name. I actually wish it didn't have that name. It's a combination of tennis, badminton, and ping pong. Um, you can learn this game in 15 minutes. That's one of the reasons it's so popular. But it takes a little more than that to become developed and uh, only the best become pros. Uh, it's played on, it can be played on any hard surface as long as you've got 20 by 44 feet in width and length, recreational courts are used, streets, gyms, malls, prisons, churches, and schools. It's, it's just exploding everywhere. I know Chicago was featured on the news probably three weeks ago for their program within the prison. Martha Poitavent and Mickey Holland were ambassadors who brought pickleball to Putnam County two years ago. They did a clinic and probably eight to ten people started at that time. It's grown from there. The St. John's River Pickleball Group, as it's known, has volunteers from Palatka and Wallaka that work in the schools, communities, and churches to promote pickleball. Our only purpose is to promote the love and enjoyment of pickleball. Uh, we've taught probably two, 250 plus kids since last spring just in clinics. It's just an intro clinic but um, it seemed to be very very well received and I'm so excited that we've been invited to provide an opportunity for all our schools in Putnam County. I have friends that are ambassadors in St. John's County, Alachua County, and Flagler County that have said, how did you get in the schools? How did you do this? We've been begging and they're so nervous. But I was nervous too. <laughs> but when Laura France called me at 10 o'clock one night, she was still working in July, and she said, Jimmy, let's talk about pickleball. I said, oh gosh, my heart almost stopped because I was just so nervous to even ask. And all we wanted to ask for is could we provide our teachers a training in the area of pickleball and they could use it if they would like. And uh, she offered us so much more. And so thank you for your support. I had a friend that spoke in Alachua County the other day. <coughs> And after he finished, I said, how did it go? He said, well, four schools said they might want to talk to me later. I said, 
oh, okay. Uh, I was real glad for him. He said, please tell me how you did it. And I said, well, you, you got to have a Laura France. And, uh, <laughs> and I think we've got the only one. Uh, once, um, I wanted to let you know we have a slideshow for you of Putnam County students. But the first slide that you'll see is actually Anna Lee Waters as she competes, competed in the U.S. Open. She is 11 years old. Oh. She was competing against a 33-year-old Canadian woman in the finals and she won wow she also competed in the u.s open with her mother in the 19 year old plus division and with her grandfather in mixed doubles and he is 69 years old she said that's why it's my favorite sport she said i get to play with my parents and my grandparents but um it's for young and old in betweeners and the pro elite which are usually between 20 and 30 years old equipment um the equipment that it takes it's not much. Just pickle balls, and if I could pass them around, um, they range in price. This one's actually from Walmart, $5.84. It's wooden. This one's actually aluminum, <coughs> I believe. That one's for pickleball, from Pickleball for All. So it's very specific to pickleball. This it racket. is. It is. The sport was actually developed in 1965, but it's just now taken off. We, were rece we received two grants, and with the grant from Pickleball for All, we received probably close to $1,500 worth of equipment, and we gave that to Interlock and High. We received a grant for Palatka High School also. This, that's one of the Pickleball for All paddles. This is a Pickleball for All paddle. Pickleball paddles are usually wood, composite, which means aluminum and fiberglass. This is one of those. We got 20 of these, 20 of those, and 10 Many aluminum light. ones. Isn't it light? It's light. This is my granddaughter's paddle. The uh, cost on those is twenty to thirty dollars. The first, the wooden one was probably twenty dollars. The first one five dollars eighty four cents. Seventy nine to eighty nine dollars. Mr. Simons, it reminds me of the days in the dean's office. Paddle. Uh huh. Although uh -huh. these, would, these would not quite <laughs> meet the uh, state got to be a little long. It's missing the holes in it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this one's a $150 paddle. Oh, my gosh. What? <laughs> These are the ones that are going Is this first. because it's not wood? Uh, yeah, it's aluminum oh, with it's the fiberglass hard. coating. They're very light. These are the balls. They look just almost like yeah. pickleballs. A few more holes, a little bit yard. heavier, and okay. they're hard. Yeah, like you're trying balls. to turn it on. Yeah, like they're like wiffle balls, but they're heavier, yeah. larger, and harder. <laughs> oh, okay. And all else you need is a net, and you're ready to go. Okay. Okay. Um, I think we're ready to see some of our students. Thank you, Mr. Cawthorn. And thank you all for your help in preparing this. There's Anna, whoops, that's not Anna Lee. We're almost there. <laughs> the first little girl you'll see is the 11 year old. <coughs> She's in the uh, Grand Stadium in her last competition. That's in Naples, Florida. I want to play some pickleball. You interested? This wrap contains a ton of information. It's a little bit mm, strange, but lots of information. These are our kids now. Can't be that much different than racquetball. Very similar. You're right. I love racquetball. Is this yeah. Randall doing the rap? Uh huh. <laughs> That's our quarterback, Palatka High School. He picked it up immediately. Of course. That's the girl that won the contest this morning. We want to try and implement the program in E.H. Miller also. That would be awesome. It's Plack High School again. This is with a, in a 45-minute clinic. That's a clinic at uh, Grace Fellowship Church. Price Middle School. <laughs> Even their resource officer with her gun on her hip played pickleball with That's these kids. Awesome. She loved it. If you get skilled enough, you'll make spectators scream and shout. The toughest part to learn is how to keep score. I can teach you in the song, but that would be a bore. The best way to learn is to go out and play. And once you do it, you'll probably want to play it every day. It's good, clean, fun, addicting, and best of but Chilisi's Tobler, he's our first coach or PE teacher to actually start teaching the sport. He started his unit this year. From church, Rick. That's our head football coach, Willie Fells from Palatka. 
trout. The competition is on the mission to make you keep swinging and listen. Keep close to the no volley zone, but you best stay out of the kitchen. The lab, the grammar scope to put away and of course the dick are some shots you need to master if you do not want to stay. You got your fingers <laughs> and people that go. That little boy was really, really good, that young man. Very competitive. And when they're done, say, oh, gee, thanks. Even Andy, if we know her. And it makes you want to quit. Just soak it in and try to get better. Because you can learn from it. The game is perfect for any age, sex, or race. But be careful or you can get smashed right in the face. It's by every <laughs> you want to learn some more. Then well. check out USA <clears throat> and contact an ambassador. Pickleball. 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 Addicting and fun. That's no joke. That's in the street. You can put a pickleball court anywhere you have space. So it's not done with a, with a wall and the side walls like no walls at all. It just depends on how far you want to chase that ball where you put some kind of stop. And let's see. I think it's almost over. Super job. Is that John Chastain singing? I, it may have been okay. Mr. Well, Chess. I, there he is. Thank you. We'll be ready for the right. next one. Okay, and a little bit more. Uh, we talked about Laura and her getting us into the schools, and she's had so many ideas. She, I wish she were here today. Express she's here it. now. Just oh, up. is she? She just went on and on, and I thought, gosh, 10 o'clock at night, she's still working, and she's still full of energy. But uh, we're really excited about some of the things she would like to do, and I'd like to also, um, let's see. We, uh, let me, I'm, I'm sorry, I lost my place for a minute. Uh, we, I'm good, I've covered a lot of this. I don't want to be too long. Um, I'd like to introduce Justin Campbell. Y'all may know Justin already. Justin, oh, they, they do all know you. I've only <laughs> talked with him over the phone. He asked me if you said his name, would you repeat it a little louder and slower? Justin Campbell. Okay. Is that okay? That's what he wanted, yeah. <laughs> He has got some ideas for the after-school program, too. He told me he's got seven schools on and two more possibilities. And this is exciting to me because his plan is to use it not only with the students but with families, too. Yes, is our 21st century coordinator. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Perfect fit. Yes, we thought so, too. That's another idea of Laura's. I'm, I'm just really excited about Putnam and hope the teachers embrace it also. Uh, let's see. Principal J.T. Stout from Palatka High School originally heard about about the about pickleball at a presentation at a Rotary Club meeting and he said I want that at my school but according to Mr. Chastain JT says that about everything <laughs> so, <laughs> but he, he got pickleball he got our first grant from United States uh, Association of Pickleball Players he got the first grant and Wonderful. what we what we wrote into the grant is because we know we can't afford enough equipment for every school we're going to use and schedule it on a rotation basis for any school that wants to participate we had a clinic recently. Uh, oh, also, let me mention Kim Swain had us come and do a clinic at her school, just a brief clinic, and she really enjoyed it. And that day, she asked her principal about purchasing pickleball equipment. Her, her, her principal went ahead and purchased for the whole school. They've got their own. They don't even have to share in the rotation. Where, is Kim at Jenkins? Where is she? Kim is at Price uh, Middle Price. School, okay. and Michelle Higginbotham purchased that quit equipment wonderful. for her and, and Matt Nehru. Yeah, we were excited about that. But um, let's see whatever, what else. Let's go ahead. Uh, we have some teacher training slides. I know you'll know these people. We did a clinic and had 12 participating teachers, even on the day of meet and greet. They made arrangements to be covered for their meet and greet day just so they could come to the pickleball training. We're excited, but we've already got enough to people, teachers, to fill another clinic, and we'd like to host another one. But I think you'll recognize these people, and we appreciate them coming. Look front center at the very first slide when it comes up. You'll see our superintendent and our assistant superintendent in her tennis shoes. <laughs> Thank you both for coming. They played hard. They played all day long. Oh, it's pretty small. I'm sorry. But right in the center back, there they are. And they're the teachers. I'm not so sure what Miss France and I are surprised about. Okay, we gave a demonstration of setting up the nets. That's one of the hardest parts. 
It's a Grace Fellowship. They're so nice to let us use the church for this. That was Sip Fallone from Crescent City. This is Rance Hightower from Jenkins Middle School. Deborah Ke Cheo from QI Roberts. And I think that's Coach Yancey from Interlochen High School. And that is Mr. Polly from Miller Middle or Middle, yeah, Miller Middle School. Eric Gibson, Interlochen High School. And then we'll have Jerry Rothschild that played so hard. I wasn't sure he was going to be okay. They were falling. They were sweating. <laughs> How many and this is one. Uh, we play four, four. doubles. They okay. can play singles or doubles. And that was uh, the previous one was Mr. Nehru from um, Inter, uh, Price Middle School. That's Kim Swain. Coach Nehru said he took pickleball as a credit course in college in New York. Wow. And that's Ulysses Tobler. Mm. And I think that's Tara Bauer. Oh, no, that, that's Tara Grace from Interlochen Elementary School. Those are our teachers that are ready to kick it off. Awesome. And do y'all have any questions? Any questions? And so it costs the school pretty much nothing because you get the grant for them. Uh, like I was just fortunate enough to get the first grant. That's a really good question. And we can get by on these grants. We've gotten two and we've got two more pending with the United States Pickleball Association. They get two nets that if four can play at a time, like you were asking, that's only eight people on a right. court, and they will have students sitting. If we can get enough, maybe with some assistance, if we can get enough nets to have within that rotation four to five nets, then we should be able to keep the kids engaged. Mm -hmm. Jimmy, I can see this similar to what happened with archery several yes. years ago. You know, we introduced archery at Jenkins Middle School, and uh -huh. it took off. Wow. And to me, this is just another way to engage kids. Yes. And reach so kids that may, city. you know, may not be involved in something else. So mm -hmm. I, I salute you and your group for taking time to introduce that. And well, thank you. I can see that really taking off and really serving our kids well. So. I hope so. And thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for uh, Let doing us that. know what we can do to support yeah. you, too. Oh, thank you. Thank you for just letting us come. Thanks, we Jimmy and Wendell, it. and for all the time you put in. Thank you. Oh, yeah. You're appreciate welcome. It. And Gary Nielsen, I think, is involved with pickleball too, right? He's one of our volunteer instructors, and he is excellent in instructing. Yeah. He really he is. This summer. <laughs> May I leave these with y'all? Yes. Yes. This certainly. is a little bit more about it. Y'all, these are locations from two years ago of recognized pickleball courts in the United States. See the gathering of the scattergraph? And that's two years ago. It's probably almost doubled by now. Sure. There we go. And there we go. And thank y'all. Thank you, Jimmy. Uh, does anyone else have a public comment card they'd like to turn in before we start this section of our agenda? Okay. I have two. Okay. I'd like first to call up Shanice Isaac. Did I say that correctly? Yes, ma'am. Okay. She's going to um, speak to us about uh, tobacco um, prevention training for educators. Hello, everyone. Hello. Thank you for allowing me to speak today. I have some flyers for you. Um, I stand before you today to present the Florida Tobacco Prevention Training for, education, for Educators. Um, it is an online course that um, we are trying to have implemented into the schools uh, so that it teaches um, uh, instructors and teachers and counselors how to implement tobacco prevention in within their curriculum um, it is it opened up on August 13th and it remains open 24 7 up until June 6 2019 and on that day the course will close um, it is at no cost to all Florida um, Department of Education certified teachers and counselors um, and it is uh, okay the, the course can be used uh, for continuing education and it can also um, serve as credits to go towards re teacher recertification 
Um, so points is a lot of points towards research. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> So we're trying to get our teachers involved. Um, they can go to the website, www.tobaccopreventiontraining.org to register. The pre-registration um, stage is open um, as of right now. And our goal is to um, present this course and hopefully enough teachers will take partake in it and um, implement it into their lesson plans and um, get our students involved in in class and help out the SWAT initiative because um, that what that is what I do I am the current tobacco educator and SWAT coordinator so I go out and I recruit kids for well youth um, and young adult young adults for the um, students working against tobacco club um, so this will uh, I guess reach them during school hours when I'm not around um, that's one of my goals is to go out into the school more so that they will see my face and be able to associate my face with the program um, so they won't think that I'm a stranger and that I do care about um, their health as it relates to tobacco use um, and that is all that I have for you today. Okay, I want to. Um, how do we make sure this gets to every school, to, so that all the teachers will be aware of it? Direct the superintendent. We we can send that out. Do we have to get a digital copy of that? I'm directing you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we have yeah. sent it out. There's an email that comes out. We can send out another one, but it goes out through Wendy Hancock. Okay. And that's, uh, I, I know one of our board members has taken advantage of it to use it to pre-certify. Yeah, I need to do it so <laughs> mine will expire <laughs> soon. <laughs> in Twenty. Chewing all that bull of the wood, too. Okay. Okay. So I'm okay. We okay. Thank you so much for coming. Don't that be is a stranger. Yeah, come, come let us know what, what's going on. Okay, I will. All Thank right. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we have Nicholas Nelson to speak to us about the lockdown yesterday. I, I guess you're talking about yesterday. <laughs> How are y'all today? Fine. Right. 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 your name. My name is Nicholas Nelson. I live in 474 U.S. Highway 17, East Palaka. Okay. Um, I just had a few questions about the lockdown yesterday. Was uh, during the lockdown, there was a few schools that wasn't locked down, like Mellon wasn't, and the high school was. They're right across the street. So that was a concern because I got, you know, a lot of, I got a lot of kids and stepchildren, so I got kids all over the county. Um, and while my wife went to PHS to check out my stepson to her doctor's appointment was right in the middle of the lockdown at 10:15, they wouldn't let her leave which I understand and they wouldn't let none of the students leave I understand um, but while she was in there they let her in and they let 18 other people in after her during what is was supposed to be an active lockdown is what they're telling us that was a big concern of mine but the main concern was was uh what I feel is the integrity of the school board was when I got the phone call finally, you know, I knew that the school was on lockdown because my wife happened to be there. But I called here and they didn't know anything about it. So I called her back, then I called here back, and then finally there was some communication between this high school and here that they let us know what was going on. But when I got the message on my phone, finally at almost one o'clock, I believe it was, they said that the lockdown was from 12 to the current time that I got the, uh, the message on my phone and but i know it was you know at 10:15. so just that little simple <laughs> lie two hours kind of makes me question the the integrity of our school board and it makes me worry and <coughs> you know wonder why i understand why you know you're gonna have parents calling up well why didn't you tell us for three hours but you know now i know because i i know you know and and they just blatantly lied on the message i mean i have it on my phone that the lockdown started at 12 o'clock when i know at 10:15 it was already started so well first of all thanks for coming and sharing this with yes, us sir. I, I can tell you that there's nobody in the schools that want to cause anybody any problems we're yes, number sir. one op uh, thing that we pride ourselves on is we love our kids and we're going to try to keep them yes, and our employees and parents safe right and I appreciate that now I don't know the superintendent could answer this question better than I because when I heard about it and I have grandkids in some of the schools that were locked down correct I called him Right. And I, but I have a luxury of having a straight right. line to him, and I found out what was going on. But I, I heard from some other parents, and I, 
let them know to look on the sheriff's office thing because they had, by the time I found out about it, it was predominantly over. Right. I had seen a, a Donnie Jordan uh, go by me very fast <laughs> on Highway 100, who's the agricultural deputy for the county, and he was going to the scene. I knew something was up, but I didn't didn't know. But Rick, do you want to respond? Well, we, we were just monitoring the situation as it was happening, and um, <coughs> we went in a lockdown. In the specific schools that were locked down, you know, we were locked down for security reasons, yes, sir. which I can't get into. But um, that's right. But again, I apologize for any delay or anything in contacting you. And right. as soon as we assess the situation, we try to get the word out to parents. So right. again, I apologize for any inconvenience or anything. I that appreciate happened. that. Yeah. I appreciate that. All right. I think our main never, goal is keep never. kids safe. Right. And I and I, I I appreciate that. And I don't you know. But the the fact that 17 people come in during the <laughs> lockdown. I mean, was it is it just not a serious lockdown? What's the deal? I mean, either it's a procedure, or it's not a procedure. Either you. You know, I worked on Navy boats when I worked in Jacksonville, mm -hmm. and when you were four ships out on a boat, and the second boat got locked down. Guess what? You didn't get off. Well, our director of security is standing behind you, and that your concern is duly noted and we will definitely look into okay any uh, inconsistencies i appreciate it but it yeah. takes Thanks a lot of time. courage to come up here so yeah yeah i ain't no you. public speaker yeah. that's for sure <laughs> no, <laughs> you come good. back anytime i appreciate it i might hang out for a little bit okay a lot, thank a lot, you a lot better miss crawford <laughs> Got thank you, you mr buckles oh, you're welcome okay um with him time for the uh, consent agenda so I need to know if uh, any board members would like any items pulled I've, I've been in since this morning and I've been through everything and I have no item to pull okay mr. Buckles Ms. Gilliard. The, the one that I, I am concerned about it's it was listed on the NEPAC and I think I think we have Mrs. a representative can, here we do oh NEPAC. okay yeah, mr. Okay. Helms is mr. Here. Helms is here okay so then so that the one you're wanting to pull would be wait a minute looking. I got it here it is it's uh, J4 and it's just for information only I'm, I'm, I'm just Florida standard yes mm -hmm. okay um, I got all my questions answered prior to the meeting so um madam chair could i make a motion that we approve the consent agenda minus uh j4 at miss gilliard's request do i have a second second all in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed motion passes what is your question Stephen? Okay. do you want to come up please okay and it's not hard i, I just <laughs> I, I saw the money. It's good money. I just, I'm just sorry that I can't offer this service. So that you know, six hundred thousand. But I was, I was asking to see if any of our employees are listed, and I, I saw Joe Thiebo is listed in another uh, part of your leadership training, and I just wanted to see would he be a part of helping to come up with these. Uh, standards what they're doing they're looking at I'm I'm assuming the standards that are tested in the schools and I just want to know if if Joe Theobo was a part of that he's in one of the leadership academies and I don't want to give bad information but I'm sure he's welcome to come out there and work okay. with us. I'm not. I, I was just thinking you know if we had somebody on the inside then they could come back and give that information to us sure, I'll, I'll and that was that. all and That's I would have asked it earlier Tanya would okay. you know would you know if Joe's part of that? Don't go anywhere yet. Okay. I, I can answer. Okay. Is this for all the NEFEC districts? It's actually for the state. State, for the standard state. Standard. But it's and it's NEFEC. only 76 X number of, <coughs> of participants. Um, it's actually the one that you were talking about with right. uh, Mr. Theobald. That's the um, Brian Dazzler leadership. leadership. Right. Yeah. He's in that. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is something that every district in the state was allowed two participants. One the state pays for, one the district pays for. We've okay. had many yes. people in our district already participate in the Brian Dazzler Leadership Academy. Um, and so that is that is like the group of people from the state level, not the state, but from across the state that are going to be at the Brian Dazzler Leadership Academy. It, okay. it's, held, it's held in Orlando. Okay. Okay. So that's like, that's J3. Uh -huh. J4 is the Standards Academy. And for you to attend the Florida Standards Academy, you had to be a previous Brian Dazzler Leadership Academy 
participant and you had to apply. So we have Michelle Higginbotham is going and who else? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that, it's, that's it's all I wanted that to know. Runs for the entire state okay. of Florida. All righty. Thank you, Steve. Sure. Yeah. You would need to make because we need to stay abreast of it. Yeah. All right. Move acceptance of item J four. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Next, we're going to. I guess I need to move this over here. Go out of regular session into emergency session. Um, we have two items. Well, we have additional items. Madam Chair, can I, can I point out number four? Yeah. Emergency item. I'm going to pull that from the agenda today. Okay, so we're, we're taking off three and four. That's correct. Okay. So the first item is to hire two tutors for James A. Long Elementary to provide inten intensive reading intervention. Justification explanation time sensitive. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve uh, emergency item one. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The second item is hire four temporary intervention paraprofessionals through Remedy to provide daily small group instruction at Browning Pierce Elementary School. Justification, explanation, time sensitive. Madam Chair, I move that we allow them to hire four temporary intervention paraprofessionals through Remedy to provide small group instruction at Browning Pierce Elementary School. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, so we're going to go out of emergency session, back into regular session. Um, we have um, under discussion and unfinished business, we remove from the table the articulation agreement between Putnam County School District and St. John's County School District. And now we need to dis discuss the articulation articulation agreement between these two districts well I think you need to um, if I'm not correct make a motion and make a motion to, to take it off okay we didn't do that last week uh -huh. the last board meeting I no. thought we did something with it no, we were going to bring it back at okay last board meeting okay what it, uh, the, I just want to double check with the superintendent we we have got to complete the services that we are currently involved with with st. John's County so we really need Teach to do out. this until we can right that, get that is correct and um renee i don't know if you want to offer anything at all but um I don't, I, yeah I we pretty much it's, it's pretty customary we just need to complete um that agreement with them right this has nothing to do with the facility at all it's just you know correct uh, Thank providing you. that post-secondary service all right okay madam, madam chair i'd like to make a motion unless you know, is there any other comment i didn't no i'm good i'm bad to do that <laughs> Madam Chairman, I would like to make a motion that we uh, approve. We've got to remove it. Excuse me. We've got to remove it first. Procedurally, okay, remove the table. We remove the articulation agreement between Putnam County School District and St. John's County School District. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. So then we need to um, discuss the articulation agreement between Putnam County School District and the St. John's County which School I, District, which, kinda did. which we kind of already did. You got other questions? Um, I've got a lot, but I don't think I need to worry about them now. Well, I think now's the time if we. Um, well, I, th I think I think the superintendent's well aware, and he's working on it. Our, our goal is to provide as many services as we can, and together. And my. One of my personal things is to work on legislative appropriations to go along with this. And right. Until we get through unraveling ourselves <laughs> for a nice lack of a nicer term from St. John's uh, Charter District Charter School uh, vocational. And we get our own workforce dollars. When we get our own workforce development funding here in Putnam County, then uh, we can do the things that we've needed to do for decades. And is there a date certain? We, we uh, have not received that date yet. Is that correct, Laura? I know we've put in a public records request for that information for the uh, teach out. Is yes. what you're referring to? I, I believe that the, the final date for the nursing program is April, the end of April. Um, so that would be absolutely. 
Right. right. That's correct. But and, and we are nego- we are talking with St. Johns County trying to work out the transition. I know yeah. we are, and and but technically, I you know not to say that we should ever not enter into an agreement with any yes. district that has something that could benefit our students because we would certainly be open to that. But in particular, we'd like to get our footing under underway with St. Johns uh, River State College. Right, and that is that is in process. Okay. And it is in process with our advanced manufacturing and our LPM program through St. Johns River State College, and and plans plans for more programs. So it's it's all very exciting. Mm-hmm. Do you have any other questions about the articulation agreement that we can answer? I do no. not. Uh, I like, don't. I'd like to make a motion okay. that we uh, enter uh, this. We it, it doesn't say enter. It just says our, we approve the articulation agreement between right. Putnam County School District and St. John's County School That's District. Correct. Is there a second? second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. The next item uh, for discussion. Uh, Discussion, input, and action for the best and brightest classroom teacher eligibility. And well, we do have documents. Um, yeah, Ms. Whitehurst here, too. And we yeah. have ta- Ms. Whitehurst here. If anyone <coughs> has any questions. Um, no, I spoke with you. Concerned of mine. I think the change involves who actually is eligible for the money. Yes, ma'am. Um, so we are now going into the fourth year of best and brightest. And... Um, the requirements have changed every year. One year they said, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of direction, then they wanted the boards to make the decision. Then last year the direction was just read the statute, like whatever you, yeah. so like districts were all doing Body-dye a lot of, yeah. mm-hmm. so um, the change is back to the, dis- the district board making the decision as who is de- who is to be deemed as a classroom teacher but still keeping into consideration what um, 1012.01 states as a classroom teacher. Um, so I've put together the documents. Um, I put together, gave you the letter, um, the DOE update with some just overview information along with the statute. And in the document that I gave you, highlighted in yellow, is the actual definition of classroom teacher. And it the, the key there is that they are in classroom situations including basic instruction exceptional student education career education and adult education including substitute teachers it's not our substitute teachers because we we use a different um, company for subs so we don't have to worry about that because i was like you're going to get into a substitute we do not have to not a guidance counselor so but then the rest of 1012.01 specifies what is not classified as a classroom teacher and it's very clear as to what it says certified school counselors social workers career specialists school psychologists librarians media specialists primary specialists learning resource specialists instructional trainers adjunct educators and education paraprofessionals so a lot of the discussion last year came from well what if some of these people are also teaching classes because we know that happens across the state and so i reached out to our auditor because that's really the ones that are going to be looking at it and the information that i received was that they are okay with a classroom teach like a guidance counselor if they're also teaching classes but they have to be teaching classes more than 50 percent of the day in order to be considered a classroom teacher so it's really what their primary responsibility is is what it comes down to and um, classes where they have um, like the where a lot of them are doing like volunteer public service and they have like office aides right. and things like that assigned to them High school. that's not a classroom setting where they're actually teaching a course so that doesn't classify them as a classroom teacher also so them going to classrooms on a regular basis to teach classes in another teacher's classroom also doesn't get if they do that more than 50 no, I mean, percent like of their a, time right but it's not like a class has been assigned to the no, and, and that's that right i get it but they do not do it more than 50 percent right. of their time right. and that's that's really the key is what is their primary responsibility so, so i have to get this information out to teachers as quickly as possible because there is a deadline they have to apply 
by November 1st and some of them may have to like try to get ACT and SAT scores so my recommendation is basically that we just go with exactly what the state statute says about what a classroom teacher yeah. is yeah, we don't and have any if we are to allow a media specialist or a guidance counselor or anyone else to be eligible then it means that they have at least 50 percent of their day is also teaching in a classroom setting do we have I any be, in that situation maybe an elementary or middle well i know you Katie may have taught certain certain classes last year three at periods yeah i mean it, it could be there could be one or two that are in that situation but i mean i would have to go so like this you're going to send this information to them as well yes. so they will know yes. if so, they qualify or so not. this as soon as you uh, make a decision on this I will take what we have here if this is with from my recommendation what you approve I've already got everything else ready to go I will just add this clarification into who they who is eligible as a classroom teacher and it will be going out to teachers um, by the end of this week or maybe Monday maybe Monday let, let me say Monday that that gives me an extra two days so. okay well, we just we'll, we'll need either motion on this mr. Douglas yes. yeah we have you've got more no. questions Sandy? no no I'm, I'm, I'm good I'm I was just going to unless you and, and I you can still after a second make more, uh, give more discussion but uh, I'd like to go ahead and make a motion that we approve uh, m1 discussion input best and brightest classroom teacher eligibility I second all in favor aye, aye. opposed motion carries see I was just gonna say that you know we had the situation in the past where in but now with it spelled out here well we don't have any choice I mean right. as much as we would like to, for um, media specialists and guidance counselors because we know what they do yeah. to get be a, you know to be eligible for this money I mean it spells it out that they can't be I don't see any high school counselors even being able to work 50 percent there's of no their way time no to way do to do this but if at least if they understand it going into it it's not as hard when mm -hmm. it comes out they they see that for whatever reason they're not included okay it's that time where we give board reports which of you would like to go first David. mr buckles I'm, I'm, b for I'm, buckles i'm so long-winded and I've, I've got volleyball games with a, one of my granddaughters is playing at palaka high coming up in a little bit so i look forward to that i, I had a couple of things that uh, i wanted to mention i'd had a few contacts from parents uh related to dot as i kept trying to say doe <laughs> in the earlier workshop i kept referring to doe as dot because it's on my mind uh, with my my contact with dot over the years has not always been satisfying but it's not always been bad uh john would you you're you're the doe con dot contact now is that co correct pretty much i mean we all do sometimes and sometimes I, uh, not i saying. think that we as a board need to maybe and i know everybody's plate full schools just started but we need to look at some of the things that we might have some legislative ability to do something about i.e would be speed limit by qi robert school i've had some parents uh, he had a near miss accident uh, this past week out there you know it's a I think they slowed a 45 but it's still you know it's a 60 mile an hour zone coming up to it and people just fly by and DOT T is very reluctant to do anything that would impede the flow of traffic that's, that's been truth. my experience in the past also uh, locally in the black area I've had some complaints about people and parents picking up kids from Jenkins flying by James A. Long and James A. Long flying by Jenkins and other schools so we might just request law enforcement to maybe have a, a presence and, and I know they do at times Rick but uh, maybe see if Mr. Chastain can work with the yeah we can reach out to them and report reach out back to, to them you. see what you can do happy to but as far as uh, the, the Department of Transportation it made it if you would get with uh, staff and maybe talk to some of the principals and if we have any wholesale things that that we really feel strongly about 
i.e., you know, uh, the traffic at QI Roberts at the speed zone, and other schools in the county. We have we have uh, with the legislative team we have now representing us with Keith Perry and Rob Bradley and uh, Bobby. Yeah, Bobby Payne. I think I, I feel like we're in real good stead. Mm -hmm to maybe get DOT to work with us. I know the last time the board got together was about four years ago and we wrote a, a joint letter to DOT to try to install a, a red light at Ballstwick. And DOT would not go for it because not enough people had been killed in enough shortage of period, period of time. Well, I mean, they go by raw numbers and yeah, they, sure they, they you know, unless you have the legislative clout to, to do things like that, you can't get it done. And there may be other areas on some of our bus routes in the county that it might take a flashing light or a or a stop light, but you know we, we've we've got some sore spots that, and I know they don't that that's going to be the thing they're going to tell you they don't want to slow the impede the flow of traffic and I get it, but if you would have get with Mr. Chastain and maybe put a little group together and see what you could do and I'd love to hear back from you. On yep. That. Okay. Mr. Chastain, we'll get together and report back at the next board meeting and right. i've got something i need to add to that when i do mine all right well let me let me finish as well I, I, and i'll i'll wrap up because it's been a pretty good long day we had a uh the last work uh board meeting we entered into we we had a little uh, i know it came out in the headlines as quarreling uh between board members but i i'm going to tell you i, I, I think I, we did I, I, well it, it doesn't matter i i'm of the opinion that you're up here, you know, you should maintain decorum and you should follow uh, etiquette and Robert's rules of order are very important and sometimes we drift off, but sometimes you have to fight for what you believe is right and what's in the best interest of the students and the people you represent. I agree. And, it, and I would want a board member to fight back with me if they didn't agree, because somewhere in the middle usually is the best solution and uh there, there are just times that you can't be scared to to take someone to task and to get outside the comfort zone in the box and i i, I suppose it's been a, a lifetime of being a school teacher and administrator and then uh, you know superintendent and now school board member again it, it just uh certainly it, it it there are times when you just got to dig your heels in and you've got to fight it doesn't mean you can't be uh, accommodating and listen and, and rational, but if you're dealing with a situation that, that calls for uh, really strong feelings and to tell you how, how you feel right or wrong, you better get out there and you better do what's, what you can for the kids so you can sleep at night. So that's, that's all I'd like to add. Verlene Bennett does a great workshop on fighting fair. So we have to get <laughs> Maybe that. we need to get her back we to Cutting County. We have to get her for you. <laughs> okay. Fight okay. Yeah. Fight for the kids. Yeah. All right. Um, the things that I, I want to mention in my report, uh, the in-service that, that happened at all of the schools during pre-planning, thumbs up. Uh, a lot of great things are happening with the various grants and, and like I've already stated, the training that is going on. And it's not just for the teachers, but the para pros are being involved in it because they too are with the children. I just thumbs up to those. Uh, and uh, I have down here to mention uh, Joe Theobald being a participant in the Brian Dassler Leadership Academy Institute. That is great. Uh, Thumbs up to PALS, Police Athletic League. They always, uh, now for, I know for the past five years, along with other agencies in the community, are uh, giving out school supplies. And it's not just junk. There's some nice things those students are getting so that they could be prepared for school. And there are also churches and other community agencies that are giving out school supplies to our children. And we are pleased about that. And, and kudos to them and thumbs up and all those other things. i uh, like to permit, uh, mention uh, Palaka Daily News on their coverage of school opening with the pictures of the kids uh, first day all excited you know like that. Like uh, the kids jumping off the bus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he was excited and then Lift Putnam with Jim Padgett uh, they enrolled over 120 uh, pre-k uh, pre 
students um, for, a full and day. for a full day and then out of the ones in last school term that were kinder kindergarten ready uh, they tested at 60 percent in the district but from those that had a full day of pre-k they were it was 90 percent of them that passed so we know it's there that we've made a wise decision and thumbs up to to Jim Padgett and Liv Putnam also, I was reading the paper this morning, and there's a circuit judge by the name of John Cooper that threw off the ballot uh, Amendment 8, and there are some things in there that are pretty tricky. Uh, term limitations, I have no problem with that, but the way that they put the charter schools out there, uh, it, it seemed lax in what it, it, it was, was almost like it was anybody, language. right, right, that anybody could just throw one up on a corner or in a storefront or something like that and just go for it without uh, really having to do anything to get these children ready. Uh, certainly not like ours. We have some great charter schools, so just just thankful for that. And the Department of Transportation, I did get a call from a <coughs> concerned parent about the flow of traffic at a uh, Brown and Pierce Elementary, and I promised that I would have checked into it this morning. Unfortunately, I didn't get up there to check into it, but I will be tomorrow, and I'm hoping that time will ease. It'll, yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll ease out because they said they were in line like 10 minutes trying to drop their children off. So uh, we'll see how that goes, and and I'll get back with you if, if we really need to address it further. If you're, if you're coming from East Palatka to San Mateo mm -hmm. and right there at the old San Mateo restaurant, you'll notice that long turn Yes, line. yes. We had DOE, DOE, DOT, now I've got it backwards, uh, put that long lane in so the buses would not crowd up on the highway, and we get them stacked up there to turn all at yeah. one time. And then uh, when Kelly Smith was state representative, I was a principal at Browning Pierce over there, and where you turn in by Cowart's Meat Market right. on 17, right. we had to widen that culvert because yeah. Yeah. Miss uh, Lewis, Winifred Lewis, <laughs> ran a, came over in the ditch there one day, and, wow. and, and so we, we got that done. But that's, we don't know unless we gather the information and then we can approach it all at one time. Yeah, and and then to our district office personnel, I know we mentioned last time about uh, Emory Riddles and all the things that are going to happen. I just can't say enough about how much you all do. And when I read through uh, the uh, agenda and I see the work that's going for school improvement, et cetera, we are moving in the right direction. And it takes time. Rome wasn't built in a day. But I know that we are progressing a whole lot faster than, than some recognize. And that's it. Um, I just wanted to mention in my board report that we had a very positive workshop today with um, Putnam Edge yes. and um, things are moving along and, and some some concerns that the board had are being worked out and we're very excited about that. Um, I have been talking to students from every grade level for the last since school started and they have all been just so excited about school. They love their schools. They love their teachers. Now some of the high school kids that were on lockdown yesterday were we're pretty mad that they got stuck in the same class for three hours, but you know, it is what it is, and we were keeping Bless them you. safe. Yeah. Um, my traffic concern I had a call from a parent last night or yesterday afternoon, um, and this is at um, Putnam Academy on, of Arts and Sciences on palm avenue and she said that is an accident waiting to happen there because the traffic is backed up which you know there's i don't even think there's a barely a slowdown sign uh, at that school but um and you know and maybe time will ease that as the parents are going in to pick up but she said it was after school and she said they were stacked up all the way down to the red light coming in both directions the principal and nancy mcclellan in the well the la a year ago to try to resolve that and the dot was in a big spat with the city or or the county over whose right away the sign would go on and i was under the impression they had put up a flashing sign but I haven't seen it. If they have it, it is when? What? 
Somebody may need to go help them out and tell them how to wrap their parents. Come down to Kennedy's Creek or something. Well, that's what I'm just, I was just bringing it up. That's what we're asking you. <laughs> that's what we're, you know, do we need to let the uh, police department know that they need to direct traffic there or well it's not just there. i like the kennedy it's idea it's not just there the children kennedy center. yeah but yeah, somebody's got to tell them yeah all these schools have similar problems some of them are charter schools but it doesn't matter I mean, no it we, doesn't we, matter it's still our kids uh, they're they're not going they may get a they got the flashing light which is a lot better than having no light be, yes but i don't know that they're going to get better i'm kind of like john it's probably going to have to take some organization on how to unload the kids and pick them up we'll reach out to them and offer any assistance okay. and you know Thank whatever you. we can do to advise them thank you um sandy mentioned this but i want to mention it as well i'm so excited about the collaboration between embry riddle university and qi roberts for credit courses credit classes in aerospace engineering uh, it's only going to get bigger and better and hopefully grow into you know a flagship program um, you know and and be um, available at our other high schools but this is a start and we're very excited about it um, the last thing I want to say is that um, feed the need is having another packing event it's very exciting it's going to be held at st john's river state college and they're going to have two they're going to have one in the morning or one early in the day for college kids and then one later in the day um, for students i think they're working it through the local churches so um, with youth groups and uh, denise is working on that now and she had told us at kiwanis today that they just got a fifteen thousand dollar grant from um, clay electric and that's going to buy a lot of ravioli and uh, she told us how much it really costs to buy that um, for the year and so this is you know they're just doing such great things with the feed the knee backpack program and we're excited to be uh, a little part of that I'll get, yeah it's in September I've got it she sent an email and I should have brought it with me but I'll let you know and um, so that's all I have and Mr. Attorney everything is going well in the legal department <laughs> we're glad to hear it um, I have two things I want to mention first of all echo your comments about the workshop today with edge uh, we did want to have this discussion with edge our main concern is we want to make sure that they are moving in the right direction to make sure our students start on time I mean all their students are our students yes and um, we want to ensure that they start on time so that they can get the adequate number of seat hours so they they're not in danger of graduation of not graduating <laughs> but we have called a special board meeting correct just want to say this for the record on wednesday august 29th at 4 30 and the purpose of that meeting is for us to come back and provide uh, progress to this board to show that they will in fact start school on september 4th and again I, i'm being we're being very cooperative and understanding but i want to just make sure we are very clear we want those students in school by september 4th because we don't want any problems with them not getting their credits so I'm, I'm asking the board to be vigilant about that because we oversee edge and just to make sure they you know are able to meet those requirements and i believe they are moving in the right direction as well but we have a responsibility to make sure those students you know uh, get a education like the rest of the students i agree i do want to point out I went to a meeting last week with the Department of Economic Opportunity, um, and they were, um, Putnam County was one of 12 counties selected by the governor to um, meet and discuss some of the uh, economic issues that we are facing. Wonderful. And these are, these are mainly counties that have not recovered from the recession of 2008, 2009. Like and we, we, um, we were there with a number of business people and government officials. Uh, at the board of county commissioners and the number one thing one of the major things that we want to focus on that i brought up to the group was workforce development and that's that's a, one of our goals here as a right. district is we want to make sure that we are turning out uh, qualified students who can get high paying high demand jobs and that's part of our advanced manufacturing nursing everything that we're doing in our high schools so again we're trying to meet those economic needs of our community and you know the state recognizes that as well they want to make sure they provide that support to putnam county 
So I'll keep you posted on that. Yes. But I do think we are moving in the right direction. Oh, we absolutely and our, are. And our graduation rates are improving, uh, district grades improving, and all that is a sign that our, not only our school system but our county is getting healthier. It is and a it is a systemic issue. You have to develop a plan that takes kids from full time pre K to career tech opportunities for post graduation employment rick and i think the district has, a has got a great plan together we can, can sure it be do. improved i'm sure we're going to find spots yeah, very good but good job yeah thank thanks thank to y'all yeah. we have great thank teachers you. out there making it happen absolutely, absolutely. And directors yeah, that's all that's I have. all meeting is adjourned volleyball